What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're on the test server here. Uh, so thank you Plarium for allowing me access to the test server. We're going to take a look at the epic champion that will be available through the Wixwell Fusion that's going to be happening on May 9th. So as we may or may not know, the Wixwell Fusion will actually be a traditional fusion, meaning there will be four. Uh, let's actually take a look at it here in the news, which don't happen in the test server so we'll hop into my other account and we'll load up the news here so the vault keeper wixwell fusion so you can kind of see here what um you know a little bit of a preview to what the fusion is going to be like it's going to be for these epic champions and there is a void rare um, and likely the void rares will be collected to go into these epics to go into the wixwell fusion so this is what we call a traditional fusion so if you guys have been watching some showcases on Wixwell, you guys can determine whether you guys want to go for him or not based on some play tests, initial play tests, and, uh, and uh, you know, obviously opinions on him. Um, if you guys decide to not go for Wixwell, is the this epic champion worth um, worth going for? And the epic champion here is part of the Sylvan Watchers here, so she is live in the test server not yet live in the regular servers yet so if you're watching this on day of upload she's not here yet but she's right here uh our arwid arwid quivergrass arwid quivergrass so she's obviously got the wood elf look got a little hatchet here it's pretty cool what else she got she got this cool bow yeah very you know elf ranger type style design um, she's an epic champion, so she's uh, force affinity attack, uh, really low like base HP. I mean, kind of expected a little bit on the low attack as well. Base speed probably a little bit below average, and then she has the boosted crit damage for the epics. So legendary is boosted up to sixty three percent, epics boosted up to sixty percent. Um, so let's check out her kit here. If you guys are not aware, her A one attacks one enemy has a fifty percent chance of stealing a random buff from the target. You know, it's kind of a meh, kind of a nothing uh, move, to be honest. She has 20% damage from books. Nothing too crazy here. Her A2 is an AoE, three-turn cooldown, with five books in here. Attacks all enemies before attacking. Remove all debuffs from this champion. So she cleanses herself before attacking. That's a good thing, just in case, you know, there's decreased attack on her, for example. And then she has a 75% chance of removing one random buff from all enemies and that can be booked up to 100 percent so this ability requires accuracy for this this buff uh removing obviously when you're cleansing yourself you don't need accuracy but if you're trying to remove a buff from the enemy there will be an accuracy check her a3 this seems like her kind of like big hit here five turns down to four turns 20 percent damage in books hits is a single target hit Damage increases by 30% if this champion has no active debuff. So if she cleanses herself with her A2, you know, she might not have any active debuffs. And then it in damage will increase by 30%. And it also will ignore unkillable buffs if this champion has basically no active debuffs. Um, you know, we're not too sure, right? Like if damage was increased by 30%, it's not as good to be honest as 30 percent defense ignore i think i think if she has some defense ignore here that'd be pretty cool but she doesn't have any defense ignore in her kit her kit looks very blah to be honest very blah her stats are very blah these are passive this champion's accuracy is increased by 50 if they have no active debuffs again very blah passive i mean i guess she's an epic they don't really have you know crazy passives or anything if she basically cleanses herself she will have extra 50 accuracy which only really helps for her a1 because then you need accuracy to steal buffs and then her a2 which you need accuracy to remove a random debuff from your enemies so her passive kind of works well with her a2 in that the a2 cleanses you first so basically giving yourself plus 50 accuracy and then you have the chance to remove a random buff from all enemies i mean there's lots to be desired in her kit we'll take a quick look at it and then obviously we'll make our own decisions after some play testing whether this champion is even worth uh fusing together during this fusion so let's jump right into it all right guys so here's my quiver grass i got her pretty decked out here in some pretty good gear i want to see what she can actually do uh in this play test 
and what she what kind of damage she can actually put out um yeah so she's packing you know 253 speed 170 uh, 272 uh crit damage 5700 attack she has enough accuracy for you know most uh normal dungeons uh, most dungeon level content she has enough especially with the plus 50 uh that she has going on from her passive um sorry i didn't cover her aura aura is increased damage in faction crypts so i guess she's maybe targeted as a faction uh crypt attack champion i mean sylvan watchers needs some kind of attack champion so maybe she's useful there uh and i let's go over her masteries here that i got for her i put her with helm smasher for some ignore damage um uh, ignore defense damage there and then uh, just basic counterattack with the a1s some extra speed here but yeah pretty standard uh, damage dealing masteries so let's see what she can do uh, let's hop into let's do a kind of a damage test or comparison here what she can do here so i got arbiter for the increased attack and then lydia for a decreased defense and weekend and then we'll see what she can do here against just like general wave content whether it's actually worth considering uh so we go attack up and then decrease defense and weaken so let's test it on venus here uh let's go with the a2 it seems like the way the this kit is laid out it seems like it wants us to go a2 into the a3 when she's like fully cleansed off so we'll do the aoe here and let's see what kind of damage we put out uh looking at about 90k 90k ish 90k ish damage one hit uh what else we got going on here let's see um okay so just set it up again we'll head into the single target attack here so we got the single target attack damage increases by 30 percent if this champion has no active debuffs so she has no active debuffs we'll ignore unkillable so we don't have unkillable on anybody here let's see what kind of damage she does on her a3 single target and 237 so that's a significant amount increased damage um because then we're going from about 90 90 to 100 going up to 240 so her single target definitely deals much much more damage relative to her aoe uh perhaps we should compare her against some like actual like attack damage dealers so let's put her up against ronda here and let's see what she can do the ronda does have an aoe as well uh so we'll do the same thing Rhonda is uh she's packing she's packing probably uh similar stats actually so let's check out her aoe here so her aoe is a double hit uh damage increases by 30 percent if this champion has more than 50 percent hp which she does so the damage will increase so let's see what kind of hits she's doing first hit 74 second hit 61 so her aoe is about 130 140 and then we can check out her single target as well her single target hits harder than her aoe and we can target Venus again in this comparison. We'll do the single target and see what kind of damage we're putting out here. So 76, 80, 90. So we're looking about 250, 260-ish damage. So kind of similar, kind of similar to um, Quivergrass. Kind of similar, actually. So Quivergrass's A3 single target actually hits pretty good but her aoe um, definitely falls behind quite a bit um here we can take a look at another damage dealer let's check out on my georgia here my georgia should be cranking out some damage here so same situation here we're going to go with the increase attack decrease defense and weaken and then we'll let's start with the aoe here okay attacks all enemies boom boom 130 it's too much stuff happening but it looks like it definitely chunked off quite a bit more looks like 140 140 ish damage so not significantly more than ronda for example um but still more than quivergrass who was putting up about 90k only let's check out uh george's a single target hit it is a single target hit we'll ignore all that stuff see what it does against the venus popped her for 172 he didn't die so 172 on that uh hit from georgian on the single target so he, actually his single target actually didn't hit as hard um as uh 
as Ronda or Quivergrass, actually. So that's a little bit surprising. We'll show the uh, champions here that I just used real quick, just so you guys get some gear comparisons here. So here's my Georgian, 7.3k attack, 330 um, damage. And then uh, what else? We got my Ronda here, 5.8k attack, 277 crit damage. And it's very similar to actually uh, Quiver Grass's stats, 5.7k attack, 272. So uh, in terms of like overall stats, the Quiver Grass and the Ronda are actually much closer. Uh, but her A, like I said, her A3 definitely stacked up decent against Ronda, but her AoE uh, definitely um, left much to be desired. Let's see what she can do in the arena here. Um, obviously, I don't expect her to be like a top tier damage dealer in arena, but we can just check out what she can do. Um, all right, let's pick on Leela, I guess. <laughs> um, all right, so this is the team I'm going to use here. I got the uh, strip just in case he has shields or anything. Increased defense and weaken because I think she probably needs it. Uh, increased attack, of course. And then we'll get the first shot off to get some damage damage numbers here. So let's see what's happening here. So shields, no stone skin. Perfect. Let's see what she can do. All right. No. Oh, weak hit. <laughs> hey, force affinity. Oh, no. He gets an extra hit. Oh no, mayhem happening. I didn't even touch anything. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens with the AOE. Big AOE here. No buffs to remove. Everything got removed. All right, let's see what it can do. Boom, 120, 129, 95 against Chris. Actually doing pretty good damage there against this, uh, this field. Uh, that's actually pretty interesting. Let's, uh, let's come back in here again and test the A3. Three, I was actually kind of impressive, but I mean, the gear on my champions probably uh, are much stronger than uh, the gear on this team. Um, so it's not a fair representation, I think. Even on an epic champion, she probably has insane gear, uh, even against this team. So not a fair representation here. But it's pretty cool to see this epic do some real damage here. All right, let's see what there's a single target to do. Let's see if I can kill this Krisk through all this stuff. Let's see if I can kill this Krisk. Boom! <laughs> 74k hit. I mean, it's okay, right? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Is like I said, it's not a totally fair representation because she's in pretty good gear. Uh, with that being said, I think she does have potential with her A3 in terms of dealing damage. You might be able to use her in something like Faction Wars. Um, but overall, I think her kit is a bit too kind of plain Jane. There's not really much going on. She really is just there to do damage. You don't really want to pack her with accuracy either so that she can remove one buff, which is kind of useless. Uh, and then stealing one buff here is also kind of useless. I mean, you could use this to steal a shield from an arena team. But I think her main role is going to be a faction war champion just to help you do some extra DPS. Her A3 can uh, do some damage, so she's actually not too bad. Is she worth going for, committing? The fact that the Sylvan Watchers actually don't have too much going on for them in terms of damage dealers, especially like accessible ones like you have alo which is like not accessible because then he's a void legendary and then they don't really have any other legendary damage dealers after that you have the epics dithy is a really good damage dealer so i mean you could be packing five dithys but you you know like that kind of doesn't make sense for areas like centranos for example ruella is a pretty good damage dealer uh orn has some uh you know solo abilities with his poisons and stuff but he's not like a burst damage dealer so for example so arwid actually might actually be useful for something like faction wars i don't know but let me know in the conclude let me know in the comments below what you guys think um yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the showcase uh best of luck on the fusion tomorrow and uh make sure you guys check out my you know most recent videos on the wixwell fusion and i'll be uh out uh ready to go with the wixwell schedule if you guys are interested in that it should be uh ready as soon as the fusion is up tomorrow so Anyways, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.